I'm intrigued by card games and video games. A video game setting can allow you to do things you couldn't do in a real world when it comes to card games. So when the Amazing American Circus was announced, which combines gameplay a bit similar to Slay the Spire with elements of tycoon games and simulation games, I was quite interested. The trailers I've seen for it seemed like it had a lot of cool concepts going on. Unfortunately, after playing, I feel that this game will lead to quite a few sad clowns. Find out why in today's video. <laughs> The game starts out with finding out that you, the player, now inherits a circus. It's a pretty rundown circus, and you only have a handful of performers. You're tasked to make the best circus possible to win a competition as you travel the USA. The card gameplay comes in the form of building a circus program in each town and trying to entertain the audience members. You do this by using cards that are randomly dealt to you and trying to impress them while trying to ignore the crowd's insults which acts as a tax. You also have access to misfits and finales that you can use during your performances. At the end of every turn, any cards you don't use or can't use will be discarded. When you run out of cards, the deck is reshuffled. If your performer suffers too many insults, their hit points go to zero and you have to discard one of the cards from the deck. It's important you try to keep your performance from suffering too many damage from insults as the performance can go south quickly because of this. After your first performance, you'll be introduced to the game's tycoon and management systems. And by introduced, I mean that the game dumps a mountain of information on you without any proper tutorials. You'll have to manage screens such as buying food for your performers, more on that in a bit, recruiting performers, training them, assembling their cards, health recovery, managing their quirks, yeah that's a whole new system there too, as well as leveling up the dragons. There's even more beyond this, but to be honest the game drops a few blurbs about it on each screen and does not teach you how to use properly any of these screens or information. You are literally left out to find out on your own. It leads to a frustrating experience for the player since you're left to find out all this information and there's just so much of it. Beyond that, you have to travel from town to town, but in order to do so, you need to feed your crew with food that you bought and cooked. These increase and decrease certain food hunger statuses but I wish I could tell you what the names are, but they literally don't tell you what they are. I'll be honest and go straight to the point with this game. It suffers from multiple problems. First things first, it has too many mechanics going on. The game is a card game, RPG, tycoon, tabletop game with a little bit of roguelike randomness thrown in and it's just way too many mechanics and gameplay elements going on. It's heavily compounded by the fact that the game really does not teach you how to play. The card game itself has a little bit of a tutorial, but really doesn't teach you beyond that, especially with deck building. And all these elements and all these screens, it doesn't show you anything. And you need to master this because the game is freaking hard itself. It will kick your teeth in after a few towns that you visit in-game. It's a recipe for disaster. Any good card game, tycoon game, or any RPG will introduce mechanics and show you how to properly play. It may not teach you every in and out, but at least the player should feel comfortable with knowing how to play. I never fully felt comfortable when playing this game and was constantly frustrated by it. I shouldn't have to decipher a game's control and mechanics to enjoy it. Not in 2021, and especially not with a game that has this much going on. I can't recommend this game in all honesty. It's just one big disappointment. On top of that, there's some glitches, including the fact that text doesn't load at times, and so you don't have any idea of what's going on and what's being said. Also, the font and the UI of the game makes it completely impossible to play in handheld mode. I couldn't play in handheld mode for any length of time 
because I was constantly straining my eyes to see because everything is just so small. You'll need a magnifying glass to play if you have a Nintendo Switch Lite. It's really disappointing. It's a game really a victim of trying to do too much while also not explaining how to play the game with proper tutorials. Again, I just can't really recommend playing this game, especially with excellent games like Slay the Spire around. It's a total pass. But with that said, that's my review for the Amazing American Circus. Again, it's a shame. It's just a shame how this game turned out. If you found this video useful, give it a thumbs up. It helps out the video. It helps out the channel. Consider subscribing. I do a bunch of these game reviews, as well as tips and tricks, eShop sale videos, a bunch of stuff, gaming news, a lot of Nintendo Switch stuff. I also do some retro game stuff, as well as some other games. And of course, I'd like to give a shout out to the Kaiju Club Patreons. These wonderful people that you see on screen here. They help to finance and fund the channel. If you wish to become a patron and help support this channel, check the link on the screen right now. It's also in the description box down below. But as always, thank you for watching. Thank you for subscribing. Have a wonderful day, and I will catch you next time.